Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem insert interval. And this is actually another problem from the blind 75 list, a list of 75 common leak code questions that we've been tracking on this spreadsheet. We're almost done with all of them. Today we'll be solving this interval question, insert interval. So basically we're given a set of non-overlapping intervals and we want to insert a new interval into this uh, list of intervals. We want the intervals to remain non-overlapping. So basically we might have to merge some intervals because uh, we are given a single uh, interval. We're given a list of non-overlapping intervals in this case, two, five. So when we insert this interval in here, you can see that two, five is an interval, right? Suppose we have one, three, and then we have two, five. So clearly these two intervals overlap each other, right? So then we have to merge them together. How are we gonna merge two intervals together? Well, if they are overlapping, we're gonna take the minimum of both of them. In this case, it's one, and we're gonna take the maximum of both of them. In this case, it's five. So that's what the new interval is going to be, right? So we merge them together. We'll have uh, a new interval like this, one, five. And so this is a new interval. And then you can see we have another interval, six, nine. Now six, nine is not overlapping with one, five. So in our output now, we're gonna have two intervals, right? We, we're gonna have one, five and six, nine, and then we're gonna return these intervals in the output. Now, the convenient thing is that these intervals are actually already sorted for us in ascending order based on their start times. That's good because that means we are not going to have to sort them. And if you've solved any interval problems before, you know that sorting always comes in handy for interval problems. And I don't know if they specify in this problem, but just so you know, an interval such as this, let's say we had one, two and another interval two, three, these do count as overlapping because these two points technically are connected. So this would be one single interval, one, three. Uh, I don't know if they mentioned that somewhere in the description, but that is just an edge case that we'll have to keep track of. Suppose we were given a list of intervals such as these, right? These are sorted in ascending order based on their start value. So none of these are overlapping, which is what we expect. What if we were given an interval such as this one, an interval that actually goes, let's say this is zero, right? Even though I don't know what kind of interval would end at zero, but let's just assume it is, right? So that it doesn't overlap with this one. So since even this interval, right, the end value is less than the start value of the first interval. That means this interval is not going to overlap with this interval, right? And if it's not even going to overlap with the first interval, then there's no way it could inter it could overlap with any of the upcoming intervals either, right? So when, so when we basically return our output, we're just going to return this original list, but we're going to add this interval at the beginning, right? So that they're still so in sorted order and they're non-overlapping. Now, what if the opposite was true? Suppose we were given an interval such as this one, seven to eight or something like that, right? Where the start value of this is actually greater than the end value of the last interval, right? In this case, this uh, interval won't overlap with any of these. And then we can just return the original list and adding this to the end of the list, right? Now those are a couple of the simple cases, but it's possible that the new interval could actually end up overlapping with one of these uh, other intervals, right? And then we'd have to combine both of these. It could be possible that the interval actually could overlap with multiple intervals in the input, in which case we have to combine multiple intervals, right? Or it could be that the new interval would actually go somewhere in between a couple of these and not overlap at all. So how are we going to determine where exactly this new interval ends up going? Well, we'll have to go, we'll have to iterate through these sorted intervals and then basically find the insertion point of the new interval that we're looking for. So we're gonna go, suppose we have an interval like this one, right? Somewhere small in between here. We're gonna go interval by interval. We're gonna see, okay, this is the first interval. Does this overlap with our new interval? It does not. So we, we would take this, add it to the output. We would look at the next and we would see that this interval goes after that. And then we go to the next interval and then we'd see that, okay, this, this, other, this next interval 
actually goes after the interval that we're trying to insert, right? Suppose we had a really small interval like this that goes in between. Then what would we do? Well, we wouldn't want to add this one to the result first. We would want to take this, this new interval, add it to the result, and then add this to the result. And then at that point, we can just take the remaining intervals and then add them to the result, and then we can return. So those are a couple more of these simple cases, right? Where we would not have to merge. Suppose we had an interval such as this one though, right? Let's say zero to three or something like that. Okay, we, we iterate through the first interval. We see, okay, this interval is overlapping with this one. How do we know if they're overlapping or not? Well, we would check, okay, does the end value of the new interval, is it less than the start value of this interval? It's not, okay. Is the start value of the new interval greater than the end value of the current interval? It's not. So if, that, if neither of those are the case, that means this interval does not go after this interval and it does not go before this interval. So that must mean that they are overlapping, in which case we're gonna merge them. How are we gonna merge them? We're gonna take the minimum of the left and the maximum of the right and then merge them together. So when we merge them, we're gonna get a new interval such as this one, zero, two, three. And once we have this merged interval, we're not gonna actually add it to the output just yet because we know that this, this interval could actually overlap with some other intervals that we now have that come following, right? And that's exactly the case. It's overlapping with this other interval, three, four. So we, we've gotten rid of this first interval, interval. Now we're gonna be iterating to the second interval. We're gonna see three, four, okay. Is this overlapping with our zero, three interval? Yes, it is. So we're gonna merge these as well. We're gonna take the minimum of the left, it's gonna be zero and the maximum of the right, it's gonna be four. So we merge these together. So now we're gonna have a new interval uh, from zero to four, and we're still not gonna add this to the output yet because it could technically still be overlapping with some following intervals. In this case, we're gonna to get to the third interval, and in this case, they're not overlapping. How do we know that? Because the end value of this one, four, is less than the start value of the interval that we're at. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take this, the first interval, add it to the result now, and then we're gonna take this interval, add it to the result after it, and then we're gonna to go to the next interval, see that we don't have any more intervals remaining, and then we're done. So this is gonna be our result in this case. Zero, four, and five, six are new intervals after we've merged them and they're in ascending order. So that's kind of the general algorithm. As you can see, since it's already sorted, we'll just have to iterate through the entire list of intervals once, so the overall time uh, complexity is going to be big O of n. That's also going to be the memory complexity uh, if you count the memory that we're going to use to create the result array. With that being said, we can hop into the code now. Into the code, and so we are going to have a result uh, a result of intervals. And as I mentioned, we're going to be iterating through every single interval in the input. We're given a list of intervals. They're already in sorted in ascending order. So now we want to know the couple edge cases, remember? So basically, if this new interval, uh, suppose it goes before the current interval that we're at. So suppose the end value of this new interval is actually less than the start value of the interval that we're at. So how do we get the start value? Well, interval at index i, at the zero value, this is the start value. And so basically if the new interval has an end value that's smaller, then the start value of the current interval we're at, what are we gonna do? Well, that means we can go ahead and take this new interval and insert it into the result. So we'll say result.append new interval. And once we're done with that, then we basically know that all the intervals that come after it are also gonna be non-overlapping, right? So we don't really have to do anything. We can just take those additional intervals, append, it, append them to the result, and then return. So in Python, an easy way to do this is result uh, plus intervals, the sub list starting at index i going until the end of intervals, right? So we can just take that entire sub list and, and append it to result. This is, you can do that with the addition operator and then we'll just return that, right? We don't even have to continue this uh, while loop. Now the opposite case we discussed, remember, was else if uh, this new interval actually goes after the current interval that we're at. Well, in that case, then that means the new interval could actually still be overlapping with some intervals to the right. So we're not gonna add the new interval to the result. Uh, let me write the condition. So basically if the new interval, the start value of this new interval was greater than the end value of the interval that we're at, 
Then we're to the result. We're going to go ahead and append that interval that we're currently at because it's not overlapping with this new interval, but we're not going to append the new interval just yet because it could technically overlap with some additional following intervals that are coming up. And the last condition, so these two conditions are if the new interval was not overlapping, but the last condition else, if neither of these evaluates to true, that means the new interval is overlapping with the current interval that we're iterating through. So what are we going to do? Well, we want to update the new interval in that case, right? We want to merge it with the interval that we're at. And remember, we, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take the minimum of the left value of both intervals. So this is how we can do that. The minimum of the, the new interval and the minimum of the current interval we're at and the maximum of the right value of both of these. So let me copy and paste. And the right value is going to be at index one. So we just have to change those indexes. So this is what the new interval is going to be set to. Now, once we've updated that new interval, right, we basically merged it with a different interval. Are we going to add this new interval to our result? Well, not quite, because remember, this new interval could still be overlapping with some additional intervals that are coming up. So we're not going to add it just yet. And then at the end, so once this entire loop is done executing, we're gonna go ahead and return the result, right? But remember one thing. So there's two ways that we could have exited, right? One is that if we ever got to the point where the new interval was, uh, it, it basically if this if condition ever executed, if the new interval was not overlapping with a interval, then we go ahead and add that new interval to the result and then we return, right? But if that never executes, then we're never gonna end up adding the new interval to the result, right? So what we wanna do before we return the result is go ahead and take to result.append that new interval before we return, right? Because that means basically we definitely want to append this new interval to the result, right? That's kind of what the function was telling us to do, insert the new interval. So we wanna make sure that we do end up executing that. So once that's done, we have written the entire code. And as you can see, it is a pretty efficient solution. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.